So Matt, yeah. you, uh, can we get an exclusive what, on what you're working on <laughs> in Netlify? No, first, you, yeah. you released analytics, right? Yes, yes, we did. What was um, the idea behind? Why did you work it, on it, this? Mostly because users have really asked us for it for, for, for a long time. And, and, it, and it makes sense, right? Like um, one of the things we've seen happening in analytics in general is that ad bloggers today have become more and more common and people are more and more concerned with, with, with privacy. We've seen like the GDPR directive in, in, in Europe um, make, make it very clear to, to companies that if they want to track users specifically, they, they have to tell users and get their consent. Um, and there's a lot of users that are not giving that consent, right? So, so we, we've, we've seen, we saw it already early on with like one of our early adopters were smashing magazine, which, which moved yeah, all I heard of that their, was story. That's yeah, really they, nice. they, 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 they moved all of their magazine to Netlify and so on. They were really like a pioneer in the space and so on. Right. And, and obviously they, they've always had like a developer or audience, right? So we always heard from them that, that it was a big pain for them that like at least even, even years ago, 50% of their users were blocking uh, analytics traffic um, and ads. Um, and today we're just seeing that growing and growing, right? Um, many of the ad blockers have, have built in blocking for, for Google analytics and for those common mm. tracking scripts. And um, even if even if users are not blocking, um, we've heard from agencies. Like imagine you're an agency, right, and you're building like a, a, a microsite for Nike that's like for a specific campaign, and it's all about the experience, right? Like you spent hundreds of thousands of dollars in design work to make this like really like to make this experience of a campaign. And then as soon as a user goes there, the first thing you have to do is pop up like a, a, a humongous consent form to can, can you please allow us to use Google Analytics, right? So, so we even heard from a lot of agencies working on that kind of work that they, that they simply st stopped adding analytics because like it, it went counter to the whole idea of having the campaign. And so again, that, that, that meant that there was a lot of questions from people of like, how can we then still get some sense of of how many pages are we serving, how many users are visiting, what's going on, right? And there, of course, since we are actually serving the pages um, and and obviously need to keep traffic logs, both, both for internal debugging and as part of our network security layer and all of that, we're in a good position to, to give reports on those um, logs. So what Netlify Analytics really does is not, it's not about tracking users, right? It's actually more about reporting on what does Netlify do. Like this is how many page views we serve. This mm. is how many unique IP addresses we serve page views to, right? But aggregated mm. so it's not personal information. Right. And that means that means that we have like that we can give people an analytics product that that gives them a baseline of like this is what actually happened in the system, right? Like this was how many HTML pages got served to clients. This was how many unique visitors so got more served about the users from the from the system right and and then either people like in cases where people can't use like tracking system that at least gives them like an, an analytics idea. right and even in cases where people use like user tracking systems like google analytics or hotjar or anything it lets them sanity check the numbers ap against the actual like what happened and and lets them get an idea of like oh, yeah. how many of our users are actually not getting counted in in the other system um so that was sort of the rationale behind it and then then of course the challenge is that we 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 serve a lot of requests and we have a lot of data and a lot of log data uh, we had just like many terabytes of log data in into our log provisioning survey every, every day right uh, and we serve serve billions and billions of requests to hundreds of millions of users. Mm -hmm. um, so, and and for millions and millions of different sites, right? So that's a very very high cardinality data set, right? So so that's of course like just the implementation challenge for us of like how do we actually okay. yeah. make sure that we can give an analytics system that that people can that, that I, can scale to to the amount of users we have that might want to see the analytics. And I, I like the, the the way you so your angle is like, well, first that happened after GDPR, which yeah. means yeah. like you 
are aware of these constraints, whereas oh, analytics yeah. by, back then, they didn't yeah. have these kind nope. of constraints. Nope. So they went nope. maybe a bit too yeah. far, yeah. if you compare yeah. to that. Yeah. Now you're building it from the ground up to say, yeah. like, okay, yeah. we're going to respect these rules, yeah. uh, but we're just giving reports of what's happening yeah. instead, yeah. right? And you're taking yeah. into consideration that yeah. these kind of constraints. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's been a, a, a big part of it. Uh, now, other things that you're working on, uh, <laughs> Lefai. Well, I mean, we we never go too public about like our our roadmap, but I, I can, can tell understand. you there's, there's there's a lot of like I mean obviously we launched Netlify Dev a few months ago. In, yeah, I saw that in an initial beta, right? People like, people and, were really happy. So basically, yeah, yeah. In, in two words, uh, uh, can you explain what Netlify Dev? Yeah, is? so so Netlify Dev is the idea of bringing the whole Netlify experience down to your local machine. So you have like a local development environment where functions work, where uh, our edge rules work and where you just in general have like have have the same development environment locally as when you push to get and it goes live right so you don't have to like write a write an edge rule push it to get and then wait to see that it work right like you can just debug everything locally and the same with functions right like you mm. you you can like before netlify dev we had some tooling that people could pull into their frameworks and set up through proxies themselves and so which on to simulate how, yeah, the, which was a lot of setup. And and with Netlify Dev, you can just like, you can even take a completely like static website without any generator or anything and add a serverless function and spin up a dev server and it will all just work, nice. right? Um, so that's in the past, so, you already announced so, that. So that was in the past and it's been really important, right? But, but that has a huge, roadmap ahead of it, right? Like there's a lot of user experience improvements we want to make, uh, getting the experience better. We have some some initial partners uh, in our add-on ecosystem where you can like provision an add-on and, and so directly from Netlify Dev, right? And you can write like Netlify add-ons, create Fauna and you'll get a Fauna data database mm -hmm. uh, and, and have some tooling around function scaffolding for that. And that's something we, we want to really like improve. take much further, right? Like to really improve, like what can you do from that Netlify dev experience? Like how how far can you, like how many tools can we give a developer to just like say add this kind of functionality and, and the whole scaffold for it is ready mm -hmm. and, and, and you can like uh, include it in your product. Um, Other things you're working on. Um, or at least areas you're looking at. at other at. other other areas is, is. I think twice. Maybe you should not say it. <laughs> no, no. Other, other areas is in terms of continuously improving the whole experience around functions on Netlify, uh, improvements to the logging experience, improvements to um, to to the control over where do these functions run and whether they get invoked, um, and uh, and and so on, um, and of course like improvements to the edge rule experience, how can we how can we push even further what you can do in that edge mm -hmm. layer? Mm -hmm. And and some other surprises that you're not going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so one of the things I was wondering, I mean I keep thinking about it, but from the outside you can see Netlify since there is Netlify CMS as you know yeah, a competitor, yeah. but I don't feel it that way. You no, guys no. don't really does it matter for you? You Net just Netlify gave a solution like this, and Netlify CMS is for us in a in a different space than than ma mainly the headless CMSs, right? So Netlify CMS is Git based and and has a specific use case around that, and and where and and one of the things we can I can actually talk about there is like Netlify CMS is just an open source project, right? Like so, it's not part of our platform. Um, we don't have like a commercial model around it. Um, we we see it as as like when you have your content in Git and you need content editors to be able to edit it, right? Like that's where it comes in. But for larger sites, we typically see like mo most of our larger like customers tend to use API-based CMSs mm -hmm. like Prismic or some of your competitors, um, but that space, right? Um, where where we do see a really interesting space for Netlify CMS is for open source projects, right? So we have like a, 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 a large amount of some of the largest open source projects uh, are using Netlify. React JS is on Netlify, Vue.js mm. is on Netlify, uh, right. Kubernetes is on Netlify, and like the 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 it's like sixty percent of all the open source projects in our space or something like mm. that, right? And 
for open source projects, they all have documentation sites where, where, where the content will tend to live in a Git repository. Documentation is a very good one. Precisely, I, I, yeah, right. Because, yeah, because already it is on Git. It already you need is some on people Git. to modify it sometimes. But sometimes you need some people that that are that are not familiar with Git to be able to open like an, an edit request, right? And and that's one of the things we've been working on with Netlify CMS to make it really good for that use case, right? And mm -hmm. say like, hey, if you have the documentation side, it's already in Git. This is how we can make people edit it. And then often like maybe some of those flows will end up being flows into okay now we're starting to think about like a publishing flow where 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 the content is from some source and we have some generator that projects this and and people will say okay now we're starting to outgrow what you can do with git as a database because it doesn't have search it doesn't have filtering it doesn't have ordering mm. and so on what how how can we go and then we might start telling people about like here's here's like you yeah, yeah. have a case for that then yeah yeah then choose here's, other other uh, yeah 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 then, 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 then you might want to be interested in all of these like partners right work with okay well thank you very much <laughs> for all these news yeah.